Hello everyone. In this video, we will try to discuss about ARM programming. So we have seen basics about ARM. So ARM stands for Advanced Risk Machine. So we are having so much amount of convenience while we are moving into ARM programming. We have already done programs with 8051, 8086. And so when you are jumping into ARM architecture, we can able to see like it is going to be a reduced instruction set machine. In that, specifically, we are having more advantages while we are seeing in terms of your instruction set. So we can able to see one by one how we can able to make use of those advantages. So in general, if you want to see about the history of your ARM, so it is going to be a 32-bit uh, embedded system. So if it is going to be 32-bit, so each and every bit representation is going to be from 0 to 32 bit. So just one representation I'm going to make. That is going to be 0 and it is going to be 31, 32 bits total. So how many digit representations it can able to make it? So it can be about zeros and ones, right? So in terms of combination, uh, we can able to represent four binary numbers in terms of your representation here. So 1010 0, 1, 0 is going to be your uh, 8 plus 2. So it is going to be your uh, value of correspondingly we can able to say in terms of a so the value which is going to be correspondingly output is going to be 0 a so we can able to say that it is going to be a right so eight bit representations in specific four it can be represented as a single digit so like this we can able to have eight digit representation the so total uh, yeah, total eight digit representation. So we can able to say it from uh, zero example zero 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 and assume this is also zero as of now. But okay, it is a, a or zero, some values. So each and every digit can be represented with four binary notations. That is what it means. Right. So in eight zero five one, uh, we have moved the value of some register with FF, right? So hash FF. Immediate addressing mode. So like the same, uh, we can able to, so it is going to be a total uh, 8 bit representation. So F is going to be 4 bits and F is going to be 4 bits. In the same way, ARM can able to represent about total 32 bit representations, which means in terms of digits, we can able to have up to 8 digits. So we can able to have it from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to yes, 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 yes. Total eight digits can be represented. So it is an portable consumer device. ARM one prototype has been released in 1985 itself. One of your ARM's uh, successful processor is going to be ARM 7 TDMA processor. So we will see while we are seeing in terms of architectures and other code construction. So it is going to be a risk architecture. So reduced instruction set computing. So why it is reduced instruction set computing? So there are very less number of instructions for movement of data from memory to registers and vice versa. Which means so there is only less number of instructions for movement of uh, data from your memory to register or register to memory. So every operation we have to make with respect to registers only. So while you are doing in terms of your 8051, uh, we will be doing addition operations with respect to memory and register. We can able to move uh, operations with respect to memory and register. So we can able to subtract with respect to memory and register. So two different uh, things can be done and we can able to save it with respect to uh, register. So I can able to take a uh, data from memory and I can able to take a data from register. Together I can able to merge it and form an output. But here that is not possible. So every value which I want to manipulate from memory. So if I'm having a memory uh, structure like this, so I'm having a register organization structures like this. I'm having few registers here. So uh, total we can able to see, we can able to ha have from R0 to R15 while you are seeing the register ar architecture, we can able to understand it. So all the informations inside your memory has to be moved inside your uh, registers one by one. 
and after that if i want to add two numbers so if it is going to be r1 so i have to uh, move the eight digit values inside your r0 and after that i have to move this eight bit represent eight digit representations inside the value of r1 then only i can able to perform even an addition operation so like this i have to move every values inside my memory to a register and after that i can able to perform any operation so the number of instructions which is used in combination of memory and registers is going to be reduced so like this we are having so many things so that we can able to call them as in terms of reduced instructions at machines so physical uh, hardware design company and arm is going to be arm licenses its cores for other companies for making its process based on its cores it's not an uh, place where it is going to make it uh, own processor so it is going to license its cores and it is going to give it to other companies and after that it is going to be making their process with respect to your arm core this is how uh, your arm works so i have said like we are having register set from r0 to r15 right so while you are seeing in terms of 8051 so we might be having a uh, few registers for its operation so we can able to move from r1 r2 r3 r4 r so we can able to see from r0 to r7 right so in 8086 it is a little more less so we are having uh, 16 bit registers in terms of your uh, register set and we can able to move those values into 16 bit registers and we can able to process it so it is having more number of registers compared to your 8051 so we can able to start your register set from r0 to r15 so after that we are having an flag register which is going to be cpsr and i am having one more flag register which is going to be spsr so we will discuss about spsr in your later point of time while we are studying about interrupts now uh, we can able to have in terms of cpsr only so r0 to r15 so in that we are having specific jobs which is allocated to r13 r14 and r15 so in r13 these are called as special function registers so this uh, other registers can be used for data and these are having some special functions so r13 it stores the head of your stack in the current processor mode so we have already studied about stacks in your 8051 and 8086 so like the same uh, while we are discussing about arm architecture so the stack pointer stack is going to be represented by your register r15 by default so this is going to be your uh, representation of stack r13 r14 so it is going to be your return address so we will discuss more uh, while we are having in terms of subroutines and interrupts uh, what is your return address so if your architect if your program is going to jump to some other memory location this uh, register which is going to be your lr is going to hold the values of your return address where it should be there so and your r15 is going to be your uh, program counter so that it is going to be pointing to the next instruction which is going to be fetched by your processor so these three things are going to be a special function register this is having a specific task and it is dedicated to some job so most probably we will not try to disturb these registers for our uh, arithmetic and other operations so which registers are available to the programmer depends upon the current mode so we are having so many modes of operations in with respect to your arm architecture so which are the registers which is available for you can be understood by which mode it is going to operate we will not go much deep into modes of operation right now so we will see other modes and other things in terms of moving towards interrupts so we have understood like what is cpsr right current program status word so everything we know that it is going to be a 32 bit uh, representation in that 32 bit representation what are the things which is specifically needed for our programming we will see just that now and later point of time we will see about other things so it is going to be starting from 0 and it is going to be ending at 31 so total 32 bit so if you are going to have in terms of mode representations i said that we are having so many modes of operation in arm architecture so if you are going to uh, see about 8051 and 8086 so there is one uh, minimum mode and maximum mode right 
so like the same we are having so many modes of operations in arm architecture so we will discuss in deep while you are moving about those kinds of modes in detail at later stages but try to understand there are many modes of operations of your uh, arm architecture and after that these are going to be your interrupt mask so which of the interrupt has to be masked so while you are having in terms of studying about interrupts in 8051 and 8086 so you have studied about lot of interrupts right so here even though many interrupts are there we are having specific masks for that interrupt if this bit is going to be enabled it is going to interrupt that specific uh, mask that specific interrupt right so these are the things which is going to be playing a major role while you are studying about interrupt but as of now we just worry about uh, these flags only so we are going to have about zero flag negative flag zero flag carry flag overflow flag so we have studied all these things in our uh, previous uh, 8051 architecture itself so we are having these many specific flags for representations of your data status so these are going to be called as your conditional flags also so we can able to call it in this representation so all these things put together we are having 32 bit representations in the 32 bit representation we can able to study about the status of your data so whether it is going to be a negative value whether it is going to be the output is going to be zero or we are having carry or we are having overflow condition all these things we can able to check so with this introduction we can able to get into the programming of 80 sorry uh, arm architecture so we can able to jump directly to the arm architecture and programming so i have already created one program so but as of now uh, i will try to show you how to open a project and how to do that one so the installation file and other things i have given in your uh, description in that i have given in an order so which has to be installed first which has to be installed second and which has to be installed in the third position correspondingly install those packages and we can able to directly move into your programming style so these packages can able to be having your arm programming your 8051 programming uh in terms like we can able to move in sequential manner so if you are installing in that specific fashion we can able to access all the things together your uh, arm can be programmed in the same key and your 8051 also can be programmed in the same key so if you want to open a new project i can able to uh, open a new project or new microvision project whichever you are going to be convenient with so i will close my old project so i will be opening a new project so assume that the name is going to be trial so in that trial i can able to save it so here we can able to see arm is here right so we have to select your legacy device database in that you have to give it with lpc2148 we are going to select this processor so it is going to be inside your nxd library so i can able to select it we can able to see what kind of arm architecture we are using so we have seen that it is going to be a famous architecture right yeah arm 7 tdma we have already seen and it is going to be a 32 bit risc microcontroller with 512 kb on chip ram and after that we are having in terms of uh, two 10 bit adcs with 14 channels usb 2.0 so it is having uart protocols and after that it is having i2c serial interfaces it is having 32 bit timers so in 8051 we have studied about timers right so the bit representations of your digit uh, timer is going to be less but i am having here 32 bit timers so real time clock with optional battery backup is also there so general purpose i opens clocks so just see the speed it is going to be 60 megahertz compared with the 8051 it is having a quite sufficient good uh, uh, clock speed so we can able to do the process in a quicker way so this is the thing which i want to select it so i can able to give okay so as well as uh, if it is going to be copying uh, project it has to given with the value you know already we have done all these things with 8051 itself and after that we can able to create a new file and give the name of this file and you can able to uh, add it to your group source as like we have done for your 8051 
we are going to do the same for your uh, arm processor also so i have made the project ready so i will open that project So here you can able to see uh, I have made a tab space in the front, right? So if it is going to be your tab space, okay. so here in your tab space we can able to see like in in front I am giving a tab space. This this tab space represent like uh, that is going to be the beneath that if you are going to use your ARM with respect to LPC two one four eight, I have to give this tab. This tab represents like this is not going to be a program. It is going to be a specific. Uh, in, it's not an instruction. Specific way of representing what are the things which is going to be beneath these lines, right? If I'm going to use this tab, so I'm going to say that the below area I have given a name with my name. So I have given with my name. You can able to use any name. That's not a problem. So after that, beneath that, whatever the things which is going to be there is going to be code. I can able to represent this comma code, and all those things is going to be read only code. During the execution of program, this instruction is read only. We can't able to change this instruction while I am going to execute the program. So these are the specifications which I am going to give. So I have to give this tab space. So this tab space is very important, and after that I have to mention it as an area, and after that I have to. Use this specific uh, any name that it should be given with the name, and after that, uh, following things are going to be your codes which is going to be coming beneath, and after that, these are going to be your read-only file. During execution, the values should not be changed, right? So these are the things which we can able to uh, see while you are seeing your uh, ARM architecture. So we will see simple examples. How these things can be introduced and how these things can be played with. So I am uncommenting all these things which is needed for me. Okay. So first, data transfer. So we have already seen like uh, we can able to use your move instruction. So this is going to be immediate addressing mode if I am using the symbol of hash. So after that one, what it symbolizes? So you are or not. Is going to be having the values of eight by eight digits, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and after that, the value correspondingly at large digit representation is going to be a C. This is what it represents. So, or not is going to be getting the value of C, immediate addressing mode. So, after that one, this R one is going to have the value of three. So, I can able to give like this, or I can able to use it like this. So it is going to be nothing but zero ex x means it it symbolizes multiplication, so it is going to be the digit representation. So all the values in front of this one is going to be zeros. Okay. So I can able to give an indication like this, and the values which I am going to denote it was going to be c. So like this, I can able to uh, represent this uh, typing number of zeros uh, instead of typing eight zeros. I can able to Represent is like this, and after that R one is going to be getting the value of zero three, and after that adding both the things R not and R one. So these are the things which is going to be done in terms of programming. So I can able to uh, move into programming. So I can able to execute it, save it, build, rebuild. And after that, come to your uh, debug mode, evaluation, 32 bit. Yes. So in 8051, we have seen register stretch type, which is going to be R0 to R7. Here it is going to be R0 to R15. Right. So CPSR is going to denote the values of your flag. Right. So these are the things which is going to be uh, used here. So we can able to check the flag status. Whether it is negative, whether it is zero, whether it is having a carry, or whether it is having an overflow, all those things I can able to study from this flag status, and I can able to understand what are the register values which is going to be there in terms of your register memory location. So we can able to uh, move the executions one by one. So I am going to move the value of zero C inside your or not. So zero C has been moved inside your or not. 
and after that one i can able to uh, move the value of 0 3 inside your r1 so 0 3 is moved inside your r1 so after that one uh, we can able to add both the things right so 0 c and 3 is getting added so your final value is going to be your r not so what it symbolizes r0 is equal to r0 plus r1 right this is what it represents so the value of r0 is getting added with your r1 and after that again it is going to be saved inside your r0 so this is called as thumb instructions. We will see, discuss about thumb instructions, ARM instructions, and JESEL instructions, the detail in forthcoming programs also. So, this is having less number of instructions and it is going to use less number of uh, size for this instructions in your memory locations also. So, this is going to be using two registers. If I want to use three registers in a single instruction, that is also possible 0C, 03 same addition but i am not going to disturb the value of r not here so what this addition operation uh, represents so it is having r2 r1 r not so the value of r not is getting added with your r1 and after that it is going to be pushed inside your r2 right this is the way uh, we can able to say that so r2 is going to be the values of r1 plus r not so previously if it is going to be r not and r1 so the value of your R1 is going to be changed here with respect to your previous instruction. But your R1 value will be undisturbed. So it is going to be saved in a new register R2. So see here, uh, 0C has been modified with the value of 0F in your previous instruction. Now this 0C or 03 will never be disturbed. It is going to be pushed inside your new register location. So in that, your R0 value is going to get the value of 0C again. And your R1 value is going to be getting the value of 0, 03 again. And after that, R2 is going to be R1 plus R0. So we can able to see. So I can able to use three instructions also, three registers also inside your same instruction. This is called as ARM instruction, example of your ARM instruction. So it is having an capability to use more number of registers inside it. And the memory needed for saving this instruction are going to be higher. So these are the things which we can able to see in terms of your ARM architecture. So next one, we can able to have signed representations directly inside your ARM architecture. So if it is going to be your ARM architecture, so assume that your maximum value digit representations of your uh, things is going to be uh, FF as like your 8051. So I can able to move to my calculator. So if it is going to be EFF, 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 sorry. so it is going to be hexadecimal. So in hexadecimal, if I am going to save the value of EFF, 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 so 8 F, I am going to push it. So divided by 2. So this is the value in terms of your signed representation. So in signed representations, I can able to uh, See, I can able to directly go inside it and I can able to explain it. So if it is going to be your signed representation, so how far it can able to operate? So it can able to be operated. So if it is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to EFF, EFF, EFF. So these are the values which is going to be unsigned representation. If it is going to be signed representation, so some values should be taken from here and from zero, it will be having negative numbers also and as well as it is having positive numbers also, right? So in this case, if this is going to be happening, so how I can able to represent uh, my uh, digit representation? So I can able to move to this location, so I have said clearly. So negative, it is going to be 80, if it is going to be positive, 7 is right. So in this case, we can able to have the value of, so these are the values, right? So in terms of negative, it is going to be 8, 0, 0, 0, 0, 3, 4 times, and it is going to be 7, yes, yes, and after that, 4, yes. So these are the values it can be represented with your signed representation. If it is going beyond this limit, this will be considered as overflow. 
So just uh, read about these things. So it is going to be very basic uh, things. If it is going to be your unsigned representations, it can able to hold the values from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 to F, 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 F. If it is going to be signed representations, it is going to be uh, midpoint is going to be zeros, right? So these representations has to be given with the midpoint. Midpoint is going to be zero. So zero is going to be uh, treated as your positive number. So it's not positive. It's a neutral number, but it is going to be having the values from, uh, it is going to be counted as your positive representation. So it is going to be having this 7 f representation. And after that, negative values representation is going to be minus uh, 8, triple 0, triple 0. So these are the values, limits it can able to have if I am going to save this value, right? So like this, I can able to represent uh, your values in terms of signed representations also in your ARM architecture. In previous architectures of 8086 and 8051, this is not possible. This is going to be your advantages of your ARM architecture. So I can move to my programming now. Yeah. So I have pushed the value of minus 0, 01. So it is not going to be saving the value of minus 0, 01 exactly in the memory location. Instead of that, some uh, complement representations is going to be replicating in your register numbers. But whenever it is going to do the operation, it is going to behave like as your minus 0, 01. So this is going to be a quite uh, good advantage of your ARM architecture. So here, if I'm going to move the values of R0 with uh, minus 1, see here, it is not minus 1. It is going to be FFFFF. -F -F -F. This is going to be your complement representations of your minus 1. So after that, I am going to add, uh, so I am going to move the value of 0, 2 inside your R1. So I can able to push it. 0, 2 has been pushed. So if I am going to add these two values, what will be your final output? So default, it is going to be plus 1, right? So it is going to be represented in your R0 uh, 1. So see here. Even though it is replicating in terms of complement, whenever I am going to do the operation, it is going to behave in a decent way, right? So these are the things which we can able to uh, see in terms of your negative number representation also. It is quite good in terms of handling negative numbers. So after that, uh, we can able to have in terms of subtraction, same. I can able to use two registers or I can able to use three registers. So zero C subtracted with uh, zero three, right? Zero C, your R naught. Zero three is going to be your uh, R one. So it is going to be R0 minus R1 push into the value of R2, right? So what it represents, R2 is going to be equal to R0 minus R1, right? This is how it is going to be represented. So I can able to execute it and see whether it is going to be working in the same fashion. So it is going to be subtraction. So both the things are getting subtracted and I can able to have it. So if it is going to be in terms of multiplication, I can able to do the same. I can able to do the multiplication process also and division process also. So in terms of multiplication process, I can able to push the value of R0 with 0, 2 and R1 with 0, 2 and multiplication is going to be represented inside your R2 register. So R2 register is going to have the value of 4. So like this, I can able to use three registers, I can able to use two registers, I can able to push a value inside your register, I can able to take a value from my register, all those things I can able to do with respect to my ARM architecture. But till now, we have not discussed about taking a value from your memory. Till now, whatever we have discussed, I can able to push a value inside your register with the help of your immediate addressing mode. And I can able to use my arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, simple addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. In uh, forthcoming uh, videos also, we can able to understand little more about arithmetic operations. We are having so many arithmetic operations uh, with addition, with uh, changing the flag status, addition without changing the flag status. We are having numer numerous number of uh, differentiations with respect to arithmetic operations also. We can able to see those things in forthcoming videos. As of now, as a general introduction, so it has to be represented in this aspect and after that, it should be having the value of R0 uh, will be will be represented with this representation. The value which is going to be presently inside your register is this. It is going to be represented like this. 
and after that i can able to perform addition operation subtraction multiplication division with two registers also as well as three registers also two register thumb instruction three register is going to be your arm instruction so i can able to represent uh, my values in terms of negative values also i don't have to calculate two complement of my uh, values manually and other thing so it can able to calculate it and it can able to put it inside your register locations and i can able to perform the values of addition subtraction multiplication division so like this i can able to perform simple arithmetic operations in amok in forthcoming videos we can able to discuss more deep inside your uh, programming of your amok thank you for your patience listeners